may have heard before. It was Zach's very favorite story when he was a little boy, and I used to have to tell it to him every night before he'd go to sleep. And it's about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were these three guys, and they, there was old King Nebuchadnezzar, and he had passed the law that when you hear music played, you had to bow down and you had to worship this gold statue he had made, okay? And uh, so, old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't do it. They just were determined they weren't going to do it. So they brought him before King Nebuchadnezzar, and he asked him, he said, Now I hear that you won't bow down before my statue when the music's played, so I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to play this music, and I want you to bow down and worship they didn't even have to think about it. They said, absolutely not. They weren't going to do that. They served God. And if you look up there on the Ten Commandments, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. They knew it was wrong. They didn't even have to think about it. Even though everybody else was doing it, they weren't going to do it. And he said, if you don't do it, I'm going to cast you into the fiery furnace. I'm going to build up this fire. I'm going to stoke it up extra hot. Throw you in this fiery furnace. They said they wouldn't do it. They didn't even have to think about it. They didn't say, well, hmm. They look around, see everybody else is doing what they're told to do. Let's think about it and I'll get back to you. They didn't do that. They said, absolutely not. They said, our God, we trust him. He's going to deliver us. And I'm not doing it. That's what they told him. So it made an old mean King Nebuchadnezzar mad. <laughs> made him mad. And so he said, well, then I tell you what, he said, you stoke up that furnace. And he ordered him to stoke it up seven times hotter. It was really hot. And then he bound him up. And it was so hot that the guards that took him to push him into the furnace, they died. It was so hot it just burned them up, just trying to even get them in there. So the old king, he could see in there. They watched, was waiting for him to burn up. But do you know what they saw? They didn't burn up. Not only were those three walking around, but there was a fourth image. Who do you think the fourth image was? The Bible said it looked like the Son of God. Walking around in there, the four of them. King Nebuchadnezzar couldn't believe what he saw. It just blew his mind. He said, how many did we throw in there? And they said, three. And they said, well, there's four in there now. He just couldn't believe it. So he called to them. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out of there. So they did. And you know what? Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Now, I had to put wood in the fire before I left, and I stink like smoke just from doing that. They didn't even smell like smoke. Not one hair on their head was singed. They looked just like they did when they went in there. God had protected them. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? You know what? I'm going to show you what it brought me today. Look here. Look at these two pieces of wood I brought. Now this one, Randy said Brian's broke it off over my head or I have his, but it used to be a hammer, as you see. I want you to feel that. Try to bend that, Eli. Can you bend that? Ah, that just ain't going to bend, is it? That's pretty solid, isn't it? It's firm and it's soft. It's thick. Now this one, it bends, don't it? I'd say you could probably break it. See if you can. Yep, that's what right into. I know I could count on you. Now that one, that one was flimsy, but it broke right in two. The other one, it was solid. You wasn't going to break it in two, were you? No. But you know what? Yeah. People are like that. Few people want to stand firm like that right there. Most of us are flimsy like that right there. And you know what? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't even hesitate. Even when death was upon them, even when they knew they was going to be thrown in the fiery furnace, look, they was like it. They wouldn't change in their mind no matter what. They had the faith to endure. They knew that God was in control. They trusted their God. Mighty phrase. I mean, most of us see the fiery furnace, we're going to snap. And if you don't believe it, look around the world today. It's really sad because that's what's happening. And you know, I was thinking about this sermon, children's sermon this morning, because I tried to think, why are we like this? Why are so many people flimsy? Okay? Well, we're afraid that if we stand up, 
we look around, we see everybody else is doing what they shouldn't be doing. We're afraid if we stand up and do what's right, we're going to lose friends. Or people's going to make fun of us. Or people's going to criticize us. Okay? You guys live in a world in a time where there's more communication than there ever has been. Between cell phones, between the internet, between all those different things, uh, there are so many ways to communicate. But I'm mighty afraid we're communicating the wrong stuff. We're not telling the Word of God. We're not telling it the way it's supposed to be. And, uh, you know, that Word is spreading on quick. And we're so flimsy that we don't stand against what, what the popular thing to do is. All right? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were found to be unlike. Think about it. Most of the people were bowing when they heard it. Even, I bet there were some people who were bowing and worshiping that in their mind knew it was wrong. Don't you bet? If they thought, well, oh, if I don't do this, I'm going to the fiery furnace, didn't they? Or they thought, if I don't do this, everybody else is going to think I'm weird or I've lost my mind. But I'm just curious. What would happen if the world... Or that even the Christians, proclaimed Christians in the world, stood like it. What if they stood and they stood against the things that were wrong? They stood for God. What if they stood for that? The world would be a different place, wouldn't it? There's a lot of things that are running rampant right now in the world. Lots of stuff. Abortion is at an all-time high. There's all kinds of things. Homosexuality is one of the things that probably bothers me very much because I see it really targeting our young people. And I mean very young people. Uh, a lot of my uh, kids that I've had in class are just real confused on the subject. And I think part of it's because that society is sending that communication that it's okay and it's all right. And we fear that if we don't stand with the rest of the world and that's what they're screaming is okay, then, you know, we'll be outcast or we'll be criticized or we'll be, uh, you know, not have friends. But the truth is it all comes back to this, guys. We make a choice whether we want to stand firm or we want to be flimsy. But you know what? If we stand, what did God do for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What did he do? They got through in the fiery furnace. The worst possible thing could happen. But what did, they, what did God do? He protected them, didn't he? We're too worried about what's going to happen in this world and how other people are going to see us, and we don't give a hoot what God thinks of we've got our priorities really mixed up and really backwards. And I would tell you this, if your friends don't like what you stand for, listen, I'll tell you something. If your friends don't like what's in this Bible and they don't like what you stand for when you strive to stand like this, i got one piece of advice for you. Get new friends. Okay? Be a light to the ones that don't understand it. But you know what? I bet when they come out, do you know what old Nebuchadnezzar said when they came out? You serve an awesome God. You serve an awesome God. You know what? If you stand like that, you might be surprised to find people that say, Wow, you serve an awesome God. And I just wonder, I can't help but wonder, all these things that we're seeing go, go on in our world, if those things, when they first started making it through the communication line, if more people had been this, might not have gotten so out of control because it truly is out of control. Okay? So you are the future and you're going to make a decision whether you're going to be politically correct, that's what this is, or if you're going to stand for God because he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God's rules haven't changed. And we can't take this Bible and pick and choose the ones we want out of it. It doesn't work like that. Okay? It's all or nothing. You're going to make a decision as you grow whether you're going to be this or whether you're going to be this. Okay? Let's bow our heads. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we look around us and we see things so out of control, Lord, we may feel like we there's nothing we can do. But, Lord, that's just not true. That's a lie straight from the devil. We can stand firm in you, dear God. We cannot waver. We can stand for what you believe in, Lord. We're going to fall short. But we should strive every day to stand. Let us be the light, Lord. Be with these children, Lord, as they grow. Let them not be poisoned and convinced and twisted by all the wrong communication, Lord. Thank you for your love and mercy. Guide us, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.